So uh, first, I just want to say um, it's an honor for me to serve as the president and CEO of the CGSC Foundation. We provide the margin of excellence for the programs and activities of the command and general staff college in those areas where the government funds cannot be used. Our three main areas of support are scholarship, outreach, and soldier and family support. Our primary outreach program is run by the Arthur D. Simon Center for Ethical Leadership and Interagency Cooperation that was established in 2009 with a grant from Mr. Ross Perot Sr. Okay, so now I would like to thank Farhad Azima, one of our foundation trustees, for arranging for the ambassador, or for Ambassador Kalazad to present the Powell Lecture to the CGSE students this morning and the reason we get to spend an evening with him tonight. Farhad, we are grateful for your service and or for your support of our foundation. Please come to the lectern and introduce your friend and our guest speaker for this evening. Thank you, Laura. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to be here tonight. Uh, before I <coughs> introduce our guest of honor, distinguished Ambassador Zal Khalidzad, to many, His Excellency, to others, Ambassador, Mr. Ambassador, but he's close to his close personal friend, simply Zal. Before I do that, I'd just like to say thank you to Colonel Roland, who jumped in the middle of this uh, disrupted uh, plan to lead this to us, along with Laura, and the very able staff of the Command General Staff College, and my special assistant, Jane, to all of them hand to hand make this possible. Thank you all. <clears throat> Many people ask me, how did you meet such a distinguished person? Well, very simple. I saw him once at UN when he was ambassador, 2008 or 9. He was doing this, this, this to the Russian ambassador. <laughs> I said, I have to meet that man. <laughs> so we, as you all know, the official residence of a U.S. Am Ambassador to the United Nations at the Waldorf Towers, and so is the U.S. President's resident in New, in New York, and I happen to be there also, my resident. Just kind of mixed clout. So I, in the morning, I handed a note to the reception, which my business card those days I used to have, and I wrote, Mr. Ambassador, I don't need anything, and I don't want anything. I just want to meet you. And, uh, you know, they told me that everybody asks, everybody calls him, they want to meet him, they want something. I said, I don't want to know, I just want to meet him. So it was very kind to say yes, and we had dinner together the following night. Now, there's this history. Thank you for that. Uh, uh. <laughs> My dear friend, he is a distinguished American seasoned diplomat and a deal maker. His service requires no uh, definition, both as the head of the policy planning at the Port Department of Defense, as an ambassador to Iraq, ambassador to Afghanistan, ambassador to the United Nations, and more importantly, his last function to get us out of Afghanistan without too many casualties, without any casualty. Two years, U.S. presidents asked him, Zal, get us out of there without uh, catastrophic casualties. And he did. I will say that when my personal experience in Afghanistan over the five decades, without him, there would have been a carnage. There would have been catastrophic result. But he, in his own eminent way, he uh, prevented that. And I don't want to say any more at this time, but I have other things to say when we talk. Excellency, 
Please join us. Well, Farhat, uh, thank you very much for that generous uh, introduction. Farhad is a, a, a good friend, uh, a dear friend. And uh, I am delighted uh, and honored uh, to be here. Uh, I've been here before to Kansas City, thanks to Farhad. Um, but uh, it was a great pleasure uh, and, and an honor for me uh, to uh, be at the college today uh, t uh, to meet the students uh, there as well as the professors, the teachers, the officers who are there. Uh, I, in the two or three assignments that I have, I have had the privilege uh, to serve on behalf of the United States, I worked very closely uh, with uh, our military and other uh, elements of our uh, security uh, in war zone or in difficult circumstances. I think we are all very lucky that we have men and women who are willing to put their lives at risk uh, so we can live safely. So I would like everyone to uh, give a, a big clap of applause. And I see some uh, in various parts of this uh, very nice uh, uh, room. And uh, I want to also thank the uh, center, thank the foundation, uh, thank all of you who were here this evening. Uh, I know uh, your time is precious to come and to listen at, at to me and listen to Farhad and, and uh, to listen to each other. Hopefully we'll have some conversation uh, about uh, the past, the, the present, and perhaps even the, about the future. So uh, thank you. Uh, it's my great honor to be here. And I think the, and the uh, uh, agreed procedure is that Farhad and I will have a conversation uh, uh, rather than a lecture. So, and you will cross-examine me, and maybe you will give me a chance to ask him a question or two. So with that, Farhad, uh, we can get started. Thank you very much. One more time. Thank you for being here. Henry Kissinger says that he lost the war, and you lost the war. So you live in. Uh, not many me. Perhaps not everybody is familiar with the role of an ambassador and his position and his authority. So you get blamed for some, some of the mishaps. Would you like to comment on that and uh, enlighten us as why are you being uh, unduly and unreasonably blamed for something which you, have, you did, all you did is carry on the mission of our country for which you have been given the authority to do so. So. Well, thank you very much. Um, I spoke about uh, the issue of withdrawal from Afghanistan. Um, uh, today, when I was uh, speaking to, to the college, uh, we went to Afghanistan because of 9-11. There was no plan to go there otherwise. Uh, the initial uh, objective uh, was uh, to bring those who planned uh, and perpetrated uh, the attacks of 9-11 to justice, or as President Bush said, uh, to take justice to them, to deliver them justice. Um, and uh, I believe that both in Afghanistan and more broadly, uh, because there were terrorist cells elsewhere as well, uh, we uh, uh, did a, an excellent job of eroding or bringing thousands of the terrorists uh, to account one way or the other for what they had done. And um, over time, uh, we uh, embraced a much broader objective 
uh, that the region of the broader Middle East, as we called it in those days, from Pakistan all the way to Morocco, uh, was a dysfunctional region. Uh, that its dysfunctionality was, uh, uh, was producing conditions that produced terrorists, uh, uh, such as Al-Qaeda that attacked us. So uh, we embraced the objective of transforming this region uh, to become uh, a functional, uh, democratic, uh, peaceful, uh, and uh, prosperous uh, region of the world, similar to uh, Europe. There was a belief that Europe, before World War II, or, and uh, through the, the Second World War, had been a dysfunctional region of the world. And its problems uh, became the world's problem. Uh, two world wars uh, that subsequent to World War II, with American leadership, and the region was transformed. It, uh, um, by the time of 9-11, Europe was regarded as a zone of peace, prosperity, and democracy. Now, when we think back uh, uh, over the course of our efforts in Afghanistan, we largely succeeded with the initial objective of, 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 of counterterrorism. And we got a commitment from the Taliban uh, and the government of Afghanistan not to allow the territory of Afghanistan to be used by uh, terrorist individuals or groups against the United States and our allies. Uh, but when it came to this nation building, transformation of Afghanistan and uh, Iraq, because I also served in Iraq, uh, I, I, I think uh, time did not work in favor uh, uh, of uh, uh, that enterprise. Because uh, although we were there for 19 years, 20 years, the transformation of, the, uh, of those countries into prosperous, democratic, peaceful uh, region, we did not achieve those goals. And because of time, uh, the initial uh, support for the objective eroded uh, in the country. Other things became important, uh, 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 more important over time. Uh, China, the great power competition, uh, became front and center. Well, after 9-11, terrorism was front and center. It's still important, but not the, the most important uh, issue. And therefore, uh, because of the increased importance of other issues, there were uh, uh, the, uh, the question of whether uh, we were allocating resources appropriately in the current circumstances of other challenges that we are facing. Are we putting enough in technology to compete with China? Are we uh, doing other things that would be more appropriate to the, to the current circumstances? And there was a disappointment that we, uh, that, uh, uh, we didn't have a plan, a strategy uh, that we could timeline that within three years or four years, if we did more, more of the same, we would achieve the goal of a peaceful, democratic uh, um, uh, Afghanistan. So I think it's fair to say that uh, 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 the nation building part, we did not achieve uh, our goal. So th uh, there's a question we, we, whether that was too ambitious. Should we have embraced that? Were there all other alternatives? But with regard to the uh, counterterrorism part, Technology is also giving us options that we did not have at that time. Now, uh, the uh, being in Afghanistan to hit the terrorists uh, uh, because of the capabilities that we currently have, you, although some presence would be helpful, we can do things that we couldn't do before 9-11. It's my personal judgment that if we had the capabilities that we have now, uh, uh, Predators that can loiter, uh, that can strike. 9-11 uh, uh, could have been averted, perhaps. So for all of these reasons, uh, the people who, who were very committed 
to the project of nation building and we believe, and there is some uh, justification to that, that withdrawal without achieving our goal damage our reputation because uh, we had a, a good close military relationship with the Afghan government, we had invested a lot. Uh, they were unhappy with that uh, decision. Uh, but I personally believe that if we didn't have a strategy that could produce results in a timely manner, it was like we were in a hole uh, and, uh, and it was a smart uh, decision uh, uh, that to get ourselves out of that hole because we were spending resources, lives, without achieving uh, results. But it isn't without cost. The Afghans have suffered. You, know, you see the on the women's rights issues, uh, uh, and girls' uh, education. Uh, and there is some damage to their reputation, but you have to compare that, those costs with the cost of continuing uh, to spend $40 billion a year on lives, and, and at least two presidents, one Democrat and one Republican, were not persuaded uh, that uh, we could, more of the same will produce uh, success in any foreseeable future uh, and so forth, they made the decisions that they did. So that sort of is, 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 is the reason I, I, could, I could comment on Vietnam, but I won't. That's uh, 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 on, uh, on Dr. Kissinger, he served the country with great distinction. So uh, oh, thank you for that, Farhad. Shall I ask you a question or uh, are you going to ask another? <laughs> By all means. I have one more question and then I Turn it to audience, I don't want to be yeah. monopolizing your time. Ukraine. Yeah. A current subject and issue that we all, it is in our mind. How do you see the similarity mm -hmm. between the Ukraine and Afghanistan, sir? Yeah. Of course, uh, these are very different uh, circumstances. It may be one comparison could be Afghanistan of the 1980s, because uh, I've been involved in at least five wars uh, uh, on behalf of the United States. The, the first uh, uh, one was the Soviet-Afghan war in which we supported the Afghans in the 1980s against the Soviets. Uh, uh, this war is more about Russia, in my view, uh, it's about Ukraine, of course, but it's also about Russia. Because the experts that I uh, respect and listen to believe uh, that this is a struggle uh, that could decide whether Russia will become reconstituted its empire, uh, including Central Asia uh, uh, and uh, the Baltics uh, being brought back in and that this is a defining struggle to decide the kind of where Russia uh, ends, um, ends up. And, uh, but when it comes to the comparison, uh, one thing that uh, makes it more sustainable is that we're not doing the fighting. It, it changes the equation when we are doing the actual fighting. Uh, in Afghanistan against the Soviets, we supported the Afghans, they were doing the fighting. Uh, and in Ukraine, it's the Ukrainians that have stood up uh, uh, and are resisting. And uh, uh, at this point, uh, both sides, Russia and uh, Ukraine, believe time is on their side. On uh, The Russians think their time will work for them. Ukrainians think uh, it will work for them. So it makes a settlement and agreement difficult uh, at this point. Uh, um, but uh, I believe that, that uh, uh, this has the potential to become a long war. Uh, uh, and there are several alternative futures as you think in the long t over the long term. And, uh, uh, and uh, we will have a big vote about the, uh, about the future because our military assistance, our financial support is quite critical. At this stage, we are not putting uh, 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 pressure on Ukraine to, uh, uh, or not getting engaged uh, uh, with Russia because we don't see a 
serious indication of Russian interest in a political settlement that will work for the, uh, for the Ukrainians and for Europe and for us. So, uh, uh, but once the war is, becomes long, uh, 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 then uh, 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 factors of, uh, as, uh, including our own domestic politics uh, could play a role. And uh, uh, here the, it will be the level of effort uh, because the cost is, is, uh, is uh, financially quite high, but the stakes are also quite high. So uh, I, I, I believe that uh, for the foreseeable future, uh, 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 the, 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 the scenario is uh, uh, more of the same uh, conflict uh, uh, and, and, and continuous uh, struggle uh, but as I said, the key variables to think about also are what does it mean for China, uh, what does it uh, mean for succession in, in Russia the internally, for the architecture. Uh, if it, uh, we want a near-term solution, and, uh, and I've had discussions with uh, uh, people associated with both sides, uh, 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 it would take not only some agreement between Russia and Ukraine, it would also take a, an understanding about uh, Ukraine, about uh, uh, the security architecture of Europe as a whole, between the US and Russia, NATO and Russia, uh, would be all the factors, uh, and there may be trade-offs uh, to, to, to get more flexibility in one, uh, make, uh, there may be more prospects for some concession in the other. But we're not there yet, uh, and everyone is hoping that before uh, uh, this fighting season is essentially over, uh, before w winter sets in, uh, that uh, uh, the Ukrainians will achieve enough success that it could affect the uh, Russian calculation. But I don't see that f uh, at the present time. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. The floor is open, so uh, I'll pass the microphone along to guests. Um, I was born in Pakistan, and yes, I've met sir. you before, I've had the honor. I have a question, um, two questions, actually. Uh, number one, you, uh, last, uh, these, both these incidents took place last year. You, uh, quite unusually, were tweeting um, to tell Pakistan, give them some messages. Uh, I think there were some very pointed messages, which were somewhat unusual, um, coming from you. And uh, A, the first question is, do you think they listened? That's one. The second is, last year, um, Amin al um handed over uh, Ahunzada handed over to uh, Mullah Kabir. How significant do you think that is? Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, what the question is that uh, some of you may not be paying attention to politics in Pakistan uh, in the last uh, year or more, where uh, former Prime Minister uh, Imran Khan uh, was uh, uh, involved after he had been removed from uh, power by vote of parliament, uh, there were cases brought against him, there were demonstrations, and, and uh, there was, a, 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 I thought, uh, unfair treatment uh, of him and his supporters and uh, uh, excessive use of force uh, against the, uh, the supporters of uh, Imran Khan. Now, uh, uh, whether they listened to me, I don't think they did. Uh, so I can say that very quickly. Uh, but I thought it was important for uh, uh, my friend Imran Khan, I know him quite well, uh, 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 that, uh, that we're paying attention to uh, what was going on, at least I was. And uh, two, uh, uh, that what was happening in Pakistan uh, would have uh, not only affect this country that's quite important with 220 million people uh, strategically located, 
nuclear weapons, uh, a very smart young population that uh, well educated and skilled, and that uh, they need to have a hope, uh, and that uh, instability in Pakistan and this pattern of uh, 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 military rule leading to civilian uh, 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 government and military kind of constraining the civilian government. This has not produced the kind of success that a country like Pakistan deserves and uh, has the potential to achieve compared to India next door. They're essentially similar people. Uh, uh, and so I was trying to encourage uh, uh, them to, 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 to take a uh, hopefully a different direction. So, and, 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 uh, uh, so a lot of people thought that, uh, uh, that uh, I was being too tough on, on, the, on, the, on the military in Pakistan, but uh, I thought uh, that Imran Khan, especially in the case of Afghanistan, where you know, he's, he's a superstar, he was uh, the captain of the cricket team of Pakistan, married Jemima Khan, a uh, kind of a, a star from a very well-to-do family in the United Kingdom, two kids, uh, quite wealthy, uh, a star in a sense that he was willing, uh, willing for the sake of his country to put his life at risk. He could have just run away to live uh, like a king in London, but he was putting up with all this that somebody needed to speak up uh, for what was right. Uh, and I think uh, that uh, uh, the kind of scenarios that I talked about in Pakistan would not have served our interest as well. But with regard to the Afghan, uh, Afghanistan, uh, that, that was uh, uh, the appointment of Kab Mullah Kabir was uh, not for uh, Ayatollah himself, the, uh, but it was for the prime minister, interim prime minister, who had health issues, but he's back now, uh, so it was for us. Uh, I think it lasted only a couple of months. I don't think it was of any significance in my view. I'm a student from Norway. Uh, Hello, I'd like sir. To thank you for your lecture earlier this day. Thank you. Now, my question is, how do you look, on the how do you look upon the future of Afghanistan? And in relations with another country, which the Americans has been to war with, Vietnam, do you depict a future where Afghanistan can have the same relationship with the U.S. as Vietnam has today? Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, welcome. Uh, Norway is a great uh, ally and friend and uh, has been helpful uh, on a whole range of things, including uh, in Afghanistan. So we appreciate uh, Norway very much. Uh, and uh, on, the, on the question uh, of Afghanistan, of course, uh, they are very different. Uh, I don't rule it out, uh, but for that to happen, uh, 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 Certain things uh, have to happen. One is uh, that uh, uh, the human rights uh, situation, particularly with regard to women and girls, have to be addressed. I think the politics of it, even if we put the real interest uh, aside for the moment, uh, it would be very difficult in terms of values for us to embrace uh, the Taliban government uh, as long as it treats half of its population in the way that it does. I know people are saying there are cultural issues uh, and, and, and what have you. Nevertheless, the reality is Taliban want, uh, want, would like to be embraced by the world, including the United States, uh, and it, it's just untenable uh, for, 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 uh, for that to happen. It doesn't mean some improvement is not possible, but to be embrace the way we're talking about partnership with Vietnam, a presidential visit, uh, uh, the whole range of economic and other relations that we're establishing, all of which I support given the current environment, uh, uh, the challenges that we face, uh, the, the strategic objective of precluding Chinese hegemony over uh, Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, Vietnam is a key pillar uh, of, uh, of uh, a prudent strategy of maintaining a balanced uh, power that can preserve stability uh, and, and, and preclude hegemony because if China achieves that, then we will see, face a global rival uh, that, uh, that uh, 
Uh, we will go back to bad old days of bipolarity and the risk of nuclear war and all, uh, all that, which uh, we would, uh, you know, it would be good if we can avoid it. Uh, so uh, um, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, some common interests with the Taliban. Uh, uh, they do not uh, uh, like uh, Daesh, uh, ISIS, and, uh, and uh, ISIS we regard as a terrorist organization. If they can keep Al-Qaeda uh, from uh, reorganizing in Afghanistan to threaten us and fight uh, Daesh as they are doing, that's positive. Uh, but uh, for normality, normal relations, and uh, partnership, uh, uh, more has to be done, in my view, on the political track, on the human rights track. But thank you for your question. My name is Art Fillmore, and one of my closest friends is Mark Nooch, who is the uh, commander of Special Forces ODA 595, who went into Afghanistan in October of 2001, and joined with General Dostin, who was then known as the last warlord, to free the uh, northern provinces, ride on horses, and defeat about 25,000 Taliban. And as I said, Mark is one of my closest friends, and I was with him on the day we evacuated the complete tumultuous ev evacuation from Af Afghanistan. And his cell phone was blowing up with his former translators and comrades from Afghanistan saying, get us out of here. This is a disaster. I'm a Vietnam veteran. It reminded me very, very much of the evacuation on July 30, or I'm sorry, April 30, 1975, uh, when we left many, many thousands of our, uh, our partners behind uh, who survived and sometimes didn't survive, uh, camps, uh, beatings, and everything else. There was a eerie, you Reference it bref briefly, our friend from Norway referenced briefly. There's an eerie similarity between the evacuation of Vietnam and the evacuation of Afghanistan. So I have two questions. Uh, I talk to Mark every day. Uh, he was at the 9-11 ceremony yesterday. And uh, he is doing all he can with a group of special forces people to try to get the remaining translators out of Afghanistan. Do you believe the U.S. is applying the proper resources to get our allies out, number one? And number two, given Afghanistan and, and Vietnam, why would anybody ever trust us again to be their advisors to fight a war like that? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for uh, your service and thank you for what you're doing for veterans uh, now. Uh, uh, a great honor to, uh, to, to meet you. Uh, on your uh, uh, question uh, uh, regarding uh, your friend who was with General Dostum, uh, uh, I, I happen to know General Dostum quite well, and your friend was one of those who wanted us to make Dostum the president of Afghanistan. So, uh, But um, uh, putting that aside for a moment, uh, on the, uh, one should make a distinction, at least in my mind, between a decision whether it was wise, prudent, served the national interest, to withdraw from uh, forces from Afghanistan, and that we weren't achieving our results, the costs were getting too high, the world had changed, our means of dealing with problems had also changed and evolved. And the way the last phase of withdrawal occurred, uh, which is uh, the middle of August, uh, I don't think anyone is happy uh, with the way that the last phase happened. And, uh, and the airport scenes, and uh, you know, uh, although our military did a miraculous job of uh, getting over 100,000 Afghans out, but nevertheless, it wasn't uh, uh, anything that we can be uh, uh, entirely happy with. And that was uh, a question as a result of an issue uh, that many books will be written and it will be studied as to uh, what happened uh, that uh, this 
government that we supported for 19 years uh, invested uh, a huge amount of resources to build a force that uh, we were, uh, uh, we believed was number than 300,000 had superior weapons to the uh, uh, Taliban, the other side, had more money uh, than the other side, had more international support than the other side, uh, disintegrated, uh, because the assumption that informed uh, that phase, uh, turns out not to have been correct, uh, was that uh, the withdrawal would take place and the government uh, would survive for uh, up to two years or maybe longer. And we had plans to uh, have forces at the airport and at the embassy uh, for some time. And that was the sequencing of withdrawal uh, kind of from Bagram before Kabul, because Kabul was where we were gonna, uh, uh, the civilian airport where we were gonna maintain capabilities so people can go in and out, civilians as well as uh, diplomats and what have you. But uh, 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 the Afghan forces uh, did not fight uh, as much as they did uh, with, uh, and had done earlier during this uh, 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 the last several months and the Taliban uh, made a big progress. The Taliban were willing, to, they say they were willing to stop uh, at the gates of Kabul. And a delegation was to come from Kabul for a government to be formed that would be made up uh, of both the government and the Taliban. And a transfer of power to take place on September 1 in Kabul in which we would have participated as well as the UN. But uh, surprisingly, the. Uh, 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 I can tell you, surprising to everybody uh, on our side, the, the president ran away uh, of Afghanistan, and the forces that were in Kabul disintegrated. So the choice was, and the Taleb said, you could choose, we could choose, which is either we take responsibility for Kabul, the US, we still had several thousand troops uh, at the airport, or uh, what happens if there's chaos, uh, uh, law and order issues, citizens of Kabul, a city of five million people with, uh, 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 what would happen at night? People were feared that what happened in Baghdad, if you remember after we went in the looting uh, uh, that took place. And we decided that we could not take that responsibility to go and secure a city, these youngsters being sent to Kabul five million people to take responsibility for the security. And, this is, and then there was a message that went that anyone who could make it to the airport uh, uh, would be taken to the United States, which even people came all the way from Pakistan saying, ah, well, if I can get it myself to the airport and, uh, or from rural Afghanistan, well, I can go to America and, and chaos happened and we couldn't uh, do that. So, and the reason, and every effort was made to get Americans and others who worked for us out, but we couldn't get uh, everyone out and the president decided he didn't want to delay withdrawal further. Uh, but uh, I think we, uh, I'm not in the government, so I can't speak on, on its behalf. Uh, currently, I've been out of government for uh, uh, over a year and a half now. So, uh, but I think uh, we, remain, uh, we should remain committed to uh, getting out uh, 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 those who helped us, uh, and I'm involved with others trying to push that to make sure uh, we do that. Now, on our uh, people trusting us, I, I think there is some point to that, but we can exaggerate that, that also uh, uh, that, you know, because we got out of Afghanistan, nobody will trust us. Uh, I, uh, I, I respectfully disagree. Uh, uh, I think. I judge that uh, we decided to get out. It was a wise decision, I, I, I judge that, because we weren't doing achieving success, costing too much, uh, and uh, others were taking advantage of us because uh, Chinese, Russians, others were supplying arms uh, to make sure we are uh, overextended, that we are, uh, we 
exhaust ourselves and not to be that attentive to other parts of the world, perhaps. And people transact based on interest and current issues. I don't think uh, uh, that uh, I have seen any serious country that says, we're not going to trust you anymore, get your forces out, or we don't want to have relations with you because you got out of Afghanistan. Uh, a lot of people that I talk to believe that it was the real, a realistic decision uh, that we made, and maybe it was a smart decision, but it's now up to the neighbors and the Afghans to see how they sort this out, uh, where they were not that helpful when we were there. Uh, so, but this will be studied, argued about uh, for a long time, and the whole issue of nation building and, and whether we should take it, should have taken it on is something that we're going to argue among ourselves uh, for some time to come. May I add something to that, please, sir? Sorry? May I add something to that? Oh, please, yes, yes, sir. Sir, I add my thanks to those our ambassador for your services. About the evacuation, I had some minor role in it. I, we were able to get out uh, in terms of not many thousands, but hundreds of people out. And that was, uh, I served on the Board of Trustees of American African University, another affiliation, which allowed us, with the help of Taliban, to get our people out, including some uh, high-value targets. So the effort is continuing. It hasn't stopped, I'm pleased to say. And we will do all we can to get those uh, who, are, uh, who have helped us who have been our friends. As to the uh, problem of the massive uh, failure of the during evacuation, it was not just our friends. Everybody had an opportunity to jump in. He said, I work for you, get me out of here. The chaos was there, and I happened to be eminently familiar with it at the time. But our effort hasn't stopped. We are trying, and we're continuing. We were able to get quite a bit of people out, and um, that effort will continue. Thank you, sir. Sir? Oh, I don't know who's recognizing folks. Uh, Thank you, Thank you, Ambassador, for coming to Kansas City again. Uh, my question is, as you mentioned, that uh, the U.S. withdraw, U.S. troops withdrawal from Afghanistan a few years ago is really big uh, impact to the the situation in Taiwan, some small group of Taiwan, they promote that, say, how can we trust U.S. troops? And, and certain that is a rumor, you know. Uh, and then what do you see about, and also the Xi, President Xi in China, he has a goal to take Taiwan away before, I think the goal is 2027, that he's the uh, uh, end of the, uh, his uh, term. So what do you think the situation, uh, the possibility of situation? And of course, the economical situation in China is terrible. It's terrible right now, of course. The United States give the pressure. And sometimes it's maybe we, they don't have enough, they don't have ability to do that. But that's also the danger when they have an economical problem, they will create a war. To, uh, 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 they would put a focus on the war rather than economic. So what do you view on that? Thank you very much. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I uh, believe that the Afghanistan withdrawal uh, is not going to have a, any a significant impact in the calculations of uh, of China. Uh, the, I think uh, the current president, uh, President Xi, or any Chinese leaders uh, would want an independent Taiwan. I think that they, uh, they, they cannot accept. And uh, 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 a forceful invasion has great risks, uh, a, a forceful unification by invading Taiwan would have risk. A declaration of independence by Taiwan uh, would also have risks. Uh, 
the only prudent uh, uh, courses that uh, they should not be resolved by force uh, and no precipitous step be taken uh, as such. But uh, uh, what is needed is a balance of power that discourages uh, or increases the risks of an enforceful uh, unification uh, uh, and maintain stability. Uh, uh, and, and I think uh, in the post, uh, in, in, in the kind of the last few years, let me put it, uh, we have become more attentive uh, to a balance of power uh, arrangement in Asia uh, where uh, we're strengthening relation. I just came back from the Philippines, uh, Singapore, and, and Thailand where we are uh, pursuing a balance of power by strengthening relations uh, there for reasons of stability. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, we have strategic interests uh, uh, to, 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 uh, to prevent or preclude, I, I like to call or uh, 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 dissuade uh, uh, that. But there is a great risk of a war there. I don't want to underestimate uh, that. Uh, um, and and uh, and uh, 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 while in post 9/11 terrorism and, and these issues of the Middle East were front and center, the great strategic issue. Now it's sort of this sort of what China does in Asia, and perhaps uh, Russia and Ukraine, and Europe is front and center, and. Uh, uh, we face challenges in being able to, to, to handle so many things simultaneously uh, 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 and, and so tough decisions had to be made and prioritized uh, and that's what I think was done uh, uh, in the case of Afghanistan. Thank you. May I please? Please. We have time for one more question plus uncle. Mr. Khalil Zad, uh, as an Afghan American who lived here for 40 years, uh, I've lived in this my country. I want to personally thank you for making the decision in your part. Um, you know, we there was a lot of talks about you know U.S. leaving Vietnam, U.S. leaving Afghanistan. As much as these decisions are unpopular, as much as they are hard, but somebody has to make it. And thank you for your part making that decision. Thank you. And thank you for your efforts to let, let the Afghans sort it out. Let the Afghans sort it out, and I think let's give them an opportunity to sort out their issue. Thank you. And uh, we'll help them and support them, and right. that's all we can do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But, uh, but I believe we should help where we can. Uh, we should not turn our back uh, on Afghanistan. Uh, on the uh, 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 question of uh, Vietnam, uh, Afghanistan, and uh, Ukraine, uh, the way I think about it, and I, I could be wrong, is uh, of course, it's better to succeed. If you take on something important, it's good to, uh, to succeed. But if you don't have a strategy and a plan for success, um, uh, persisting, uh, hoping for a miracle, that's not also uh, uh, prudent. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, we thought our withdrawal from Vietnam would be catastrophic. Uh, the, the dominoes will fall. I'm old enough to remember that. Um, but in fact, dominoes did not fall. In fact, Southeast Asia came together rather than dominoes falling, and it's a prosperous, stable region that we have a strategic relationship with. And Vietnam, with the current problem rather than the previous problem, the current problem of China, which is the strategic, uh, the most important strategic issue we face, uh, Vietnam is likely to be on our side. Uh, so uh, 
Adjusting wisely to change circumstances uh, is the sign of a, of a smart power. Uh, um, uh, because overextension uh, can lead to decay, uh, to overextension uh, can lead to decline, and that's how great uh, empires and powers sometimes uh, they go down either because they overextend themselves, uh, there is no ends and means good relation, they keep uh, extending, and two, they decay from inside. Uh, and other powers that want to uh, become more powerful or more uh, uh, energized uh, because they want to catch, uh, uh, catch up with you or surpass you. So uh, uh, I think Ukraine is different than Vietnam or, or uh, Afghanistan where I, uh, I was not involved in the Vietnam issues. Afghanistan, we achieved that strategic objective which is a terrorism issue. I think. Uh, uh, the intelligence community says the Taliban are delivering on the commitment not to allow Al-Qaeda. I think the most recent estimate says no threat until the end of next year. And yet another interview says they don't, we don't believe they will reconstitute in Afghanistan. And uh, Daesh is the current problem. And as I said, there is, uh, they are the strong enemy of each other. Um, but uh, uh, I think this is the end, so I would like to say something in conclusion, or, or, or we have more. But uh, uh, I think uh, there's a lot of patriots in this room, people with concern, uh, strong concerns and passionate concern about what we have done, about the circumstances, about friends that uh, helped us and their fate, uh, about partnerships we make and uh, adjustment that we make that appeal or displease, uh, that's a sign of a, of a, of a, a society that is uh, uh, rigorously debating and arguing uh, and considering what has happened, what should happen. And I see all of that in this room and patriots uh, uh, that uh, serve the country with distinction. I'm very grateful, first I have to say, uh, uh, you know, I came to the United States as a, as a uh, relatively young immigrant, student immigrant, so uh, it's been, uh, uh, America embraced me and uh, gave me responsibilities that I wouldn't have dreamed of, and so I feel great honor to, uh, to have served, uh, and, and, and uh, the, this is a very unique country. Uh, and 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 uh, and I, I can see why the country has been as successful as it is by the presence of the people and the views that I have heard. So I'm grateful to my good friend uh, Farhad uh, and Linda. Uh, thanks to you, uh, uh, his, uh, his his wife and uh, all the friends. Some I have not seen before. Uh, some new friends that uh, I have made. Uh, uh, I'm very pleased. Uh, to have spent some time with you, and thank you for your comments and questions. Uh, good night to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>